Day 54 of the 75 day challenge, just wrapped up my walk. Um, and kind of what's been on my mind during today's walk is just today is gonna be really focused on taking a deep dive into what my options are going to look like a few months from now. Um, and even thinking far beyond May and June, I think one thing that I've noticed is seems like every single day the news changes. Um, you know, we went from a potential Easter deadline to now an April 30th deadline and uh, June 1st was thrown out there as well. So because there's so, so much uncertainty and these and the scenario is so unpredictable, one of the things that I'm gonna do today is really take a deep, deep dive into playing this out a hundred different ways. So whether this thing lasts another two months, another three months, another five months, what are my options, what are my choices, and what moves can I make in every scenario? Um, I just wanna make sure that I'm prepared and that I know what my options and choices are right now so that decisions don't have to be made for me later on. I don't wanna be limited. And that way I can also plant whatever seeds I need to plant right now to prepare for you know, 30, 60, 90, 180 days out. Um, and you know, one of the things that I do a lot is, um, of course, a lot of reading, a lot of staying in touch with what's going on, but more specifically is just making sure that the information source is an accurate one. Um, one of the things I do on a daily basis is I watch the White House briefings that come on because I want that to be the direct source of information. Um, there's like a handful of doctors and scientists that I follow who are very trustworthy in the community and you can trust their information. Um, and then not only that, but I look at things like what are banks and lenders doing right now? I've been receiving emails from every single one of my banks, every single one of my financing companies, and I'm reading very carefully what they're saying. Like for example, one of the things that really stood out to me from one of my banks is that they said that they're prepared to offer 180 days of deferment for mortgages. And that's one of the directives that they're receiving from the federal government. And so that's really interesting. Now, I don't have a mortgage, so it doesn't apply to me, but that does tell me something, right? It tells me something that about the lending industry, about our banking systems, is that if they're willing to offer six months of deferment, does that mean that this is a little bit more severe than what we think it is? Or are they just being prepared for a worst case scenario. So I like to really read through a lot of this type of stuff that comes through my inbox and just have really accurate sources of information and um, kind of take that into account as I think about what my contingency plans might be. And I like to base my options off of that as well. So anyways, um, just kind of sharing some of the thoughts that were running through my mind today. So. I think the thing that I can use my time for today, my impact activities is really going to revolve around deeply analyzing what my choices are, whether I'll have to end up using these options or not, that's uncertain, but I wanna know. I wanna know with a very clear picture what my options look like in every different scenario and what resources are available to me and what I need to do today, right now, in the next couple of days to make sure that I'm planting those seeds. So those are just kind of my thoughts for this morning. All right, guys, day 54. I'll be back with you guys later. Wrapping up my nightly reading of The Wealthy Gardener, chapter four, lesson 41, self-mastery. I'm gonna read you guys a big chunk of this chapter because it was so good and definitely some really useful information. The molder of internal conditions considered the wealthy gardener is the shaper of external conditions. We master our money by mastering ourselves. Self-mastery is a lot of things, said the wealthy gardener, but we are talking about financial success, and so it's about an obsessive devotion to our goals. When times are tough, we need a goal to stay on course. When times are good, we need a goal to keep the momentum. Goals focus our thoughts, and our focus determines our plans. 
Goals are also center the inner wisdom that seeks to guide us. And talk about tough times for so many people right now. And so to keep that in mind that goals keep you focused and really this is not a great time to become complacent or be bogged down by all of the challenges that are taking place. You want to remember to really set those goals and keep them in mind. So mastering the self is just having goals, Jimmy asked. Self-mastery is the ability to know exactly what you want and the discipline to carry your goals with you during your days. It's also feeling and acting like a person who is already successful. If you can maintain this ongoing mentality, you'll have attained the ultimate level of daily self-mastery. And you'll be guided if only you remember to remember to pause and listen to your inner voice. That's actually such a good point because I think the hardest part about a lot of these lessons is getting into that mode of practicing them. And exactly like what he said, it's remembering to remember on a daily basis. And even I struggle with that. And so something that I do to kind of really help me is I have a bunch of alerts set on my phone for that repeat on a daily basis that remind me to kind of go through some of my morning um, I guess mantras or whatever it is, the things that you should be looking at, like your goals. So I have stuff like that set on my phone and I have to take notes just so that I can remember everything that there is to remember because there's a lot and it takes time to get yourself into that routine and more so to continue to practice that so that you can get into that routine. Self-mastery is controlling our internal state regardless of external conditions. It is mental transcendence. It is the stubborn command of thought, intention, and emotion. It is the firm resolution to perform any action for as long as it takes to earn results. It's doing things we should be doing and avoiding things we should not be doing. It is discipline, self-control, and resolve to rise above our financial conditions. In my own life, upward mobility has relied on my daily capacity to hold a clear goal of wealth in my mind and to believe I would achieve it despite all evidence to the contrary. I definitely know what he's talking about there. Negative feelings and doubts also arose during soul-crushing setbacks, of course, but my attention has always veered back to goals. Goals focus... Goal focus is the ultimate essence of self-mastery, and the battle of the mind is waged anew every day. The second essential element of self-mastery is the continuous strive to feel accomplished. Be as you wish to seem, said Socrates. Before achieving financial freedom, I strove to be the person who had already attained great wealth. In my mind, I was resounding success even when trapped in the struggles of an ordinary life. Earl Nightingale said, hold your goal before you. Everything else will take care of itself. William James added, act, look, feel successful, conduct, conduct yourself accordingly, and you will be amazed at the positive results. In my 20s, I was overwhelmed with the duties of a single business. During my 40s, I juggled greater responsibilities with three small businesses while raising a family and entering triathlons. And I also mentioned a more optimistic and expectant daily attitude. What was the difference? Studies suggest that grit ripens with age. But still, it should not be overlooked that by my 40s, I had adopted my daily rituals. In my 40s, I was crazy enough to read my goals aloud with the intent of driving them into my subconscious mind. I was weird enough to sit alone in a sauna every night and feel like a person who already had wealth. I would imagine my wishes fulfilled, security, wealth, and lifestyle freedom. I was open-minded enough to trust universal intelligence, would notice if I stirred up a burning gratitude for an outcome. And I was nutty enough to consider that feeling successful in my days mattered in my quest for wealth. Year after year, one day at a time, I mastered myself. I focused on one goal. I controlled my mind to stay on task on one task. My mind then compelled me to take actions, and my own inner wisdom emerged. I am indeed a king because I know how to rule myself, said Pietro Ar Aretino. We control thought, or we control nothing. We control money by controlling ourselves. 
Self-control, said George Bernard Shaw, is the quality that distinguishes the fittest of survive. Self-mastery is transcendence. It is fixating our thoughts on a target throughout life and then trusting that everything will take care of itself. It's knowing that the right actions spring from a focused mind. It's having faith that a deliberate daily focus attracts ideas, people, situations, and events to support our goals. It's learning that self-mastery engages the aid of the universal intelligence. The essence of self-mastery is the clarity to know exactly what we want, the discipline to carry our goals with us during our days, and the awareness to feel and be the successful person in advance of our crowning achievements. The life lesson, self-mastery. I learned to master intentions, emotions, and actions. And by controlling myself, I gained control over my money. So really, I don't even have anything to add to this because it was just so well-written and just great points on mastering the self to master all of our other goals. And that is day 54 of the 75 day challenge links to the book and the challenge are in my description down below. And on that note, I need to call it a night. The wealthy garter by John Sferic. Thanks for following along guys. Good night. Take care.